In 2013, fans of the Metal Gear franchise were greeted to the surprise of a spin-off game released on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and one year later the PC, which was called Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. The game itself was published by Konami. However, midway through development, it was decided that a new company would take on the role of developing the game, calling themselves Platinum Games, who you may recognize as the developers of games such as Bayonetta, Vanquish, and Nier Automata. Or Automata, I really don't care. Despite being drastically different from previous Metal Gears, it was well received at launch and has left behind a truly noteworthy legacy a fun hack and slash combat, memorable bosses, and memes. The DNA of the soul. And today, I'm here to tell you about what this game is and how it plays. Hey, my name is Jude, and this is what is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. So let's get that story out of the way, shall we? Because unlike my previous What Is video, which you can find right here, by the way, there's a lot more to go over with this one. The game takes place four years after the events of Metal Gear Solid 4 and focuses on the cyborg Raiden, who in no way resembles 2B from Nier Automata. Now he works for the company called Maverick, when they're attacked by a PMC group calling themselves Desperado. So now Raiden follows Desperado wherever they go, finds out that they're out to jumpstart the war economy, gets a pet robot dog, deals with his inner conflict from being a child soldier, lets that inner conflict let it rip, takes it out on Desperado, and bingo bingo, you kill the Colorado Senator. Ah! Raiden wins. Fatality. Now, oversimplifying aside, compared to previous Metal Gears, this story isn't nearly as long or as complicated as previous entries, making it much easier for newcomers like myself to get into. On top of that, the tone isn't nearly as dark as previous entries either, but it does feature themes such as human trafficking, police brutality, freedom, but who cares about that stuff? Because holy moly, this game knows how to be stupid and awesome at the same time. Metal Gear Rising is non-stop, over-the-top, off-the-rails action, and it is glorious. The main theme of the game is, uh, revenge. And you'll be getting your revenge on folks like Brazilian Virgil, Robo Sif, Corporations, the Popo, Senators, and cats who have mastered Ultra Instinct. Now, Raiden is a good character on his own merits. He starts out saying that he's only fighting to protect those in need, claiming that his sword is a tool for justice. However, he begins to realize that's not his only motivation. From his time as a child soldier, he developed the nickname Jack the Ripper, a side of himself that enjoys the act of killing and fighting. And halfway through the game, he lets that Beyblade rip. Another interesting thing about Raiden is that Maverick only referred to him as Raiden because they only see the good person that he is, while Desperado will only refer to him as Jack because they only see him as the bloodthirsty killer that they themselves have embraced. Unfortunately, the rest of Maverick don't get much in the way of development. The only way to learn about them more is through optional Kodak conversations during missions, with the exception of Blade Wolf, whose whole arc is about him wanting freedom. And while the boss themes do give you an insight on who these people are, Armstrong and Sam's motivations are more upfront and given more time than the rest. So if you're looking for a game that has a great story with tons of political themes, interesting protagonists, entertaining villains, but also isn't afraid to be stupid and awesome at the same time, look no further. So, what do you think? So you won't just be playing this game for the story, characters, or the themes. You'll also be playing Metal Gear Rising for the gameplay. The game itself is a hack and slash with light stealth elements sprinkled in. You'll be playing as Raiden throughout the main campaign, and the only time where you'll play as a different character is when you play as Blade Wolf and Jetshin Sam in their DLC campaigns. But we'll talk about those two later. Now, your controls are pretty standard stuff. A button to jump, X and Y to use your light and heavy attacks, but where things get interesting are your triggers and bumpers. By holding down RT, Raiden will sprint forward, and if he's near a wall, he can climb over most of them to traverse throughout the environment. Holding down LB will allow you to aim your secondary abilities, such as grenades and rocket launcher. Pressing X with the left stick forward will allow you to activate your parry move. However, keep in mind that it's forward from where the enemy is currently attacked, as indicated by the red flash from opponents. This is your only way of blocking. See, Raiden is too cool to block, so he just spams the parry over and over again. If the enemy is weak enough, you can press both Y and B to go into a finishing Zandatsu move, which can reward you with their... <clears throat> bodily fluids. Doing so will restore Ryan's HP and MP to full. Another ability you'll unlock halfway through the game is called Fury Mode. This burns through Ryan's MP but can make short work of foes by pressing both sticks at the same time. 
Lastly, holding down LT will take you into a normal Zendatsu. While in this mode, you can press X or Y to do a normal or heavy attack. However, if you use the right analog stick, you'll go into free blade mode, which allows you to slice up opponents in whichever way you choose. In other words, get good and chop away at their hearts. Now keep in mind that you can't just use Zendatsu whenever you feel like it. They have to be in a weakened state first, so be sure to keep an eye out for certain opponent's arms. If you successfully cut one off, you'll be rewarded by the Doctor with things such as wigs, so you don't go bald like Sundowner over here. Now before we move on, I would like to make an official announcement. <clears throat> Stealth is optional. <laughs> Yes, unlike previous Metal Gear, stealth is not a factor here at all. Sure, you can quietly take down foes, but it's very difficult to do since, honestly, the stealth is undercooked. Aside from just more points at the end of a mission, the only reason why you want to sneak around is to save some civilians. There are some minor bonuses, but they're not really worth going after. Also, you can do this to them. Good grief, he's naked! Let's talk about the enemies now, shall we? You'll be encountering a decent variety of foes throughout Metal Gear Rising. The main opponents you'll be fighting are Desperado's foot soldiers, who have some questionable intelligence sometimes. Hey look, a cardboard box washed up on the beach. Holy fish paste, it's a guy! There's also the Geckos, who are the only returning enemies from MGS4, along with Blade Wolf bootlegs, cops, hand remains from Monster Hunter, and of course... Helicopter, helicopter. Well, regardless of which enemies you come across, be sure to keep your eyes on the prize, because these dudes will not hesitate to gang up on you. But you have more than your sword to fight with, however. As you progress through the game, you'll unlock various secondary weapons. These weapons include the Bloodlust, which, while slow, can be charged up to cut opponents like a pair of scissors. Dystopia, which is insanely busted. This thing, when upgraded, can shut down cyborgs completely. It can also be used to zip over to opponents when pressing the Y button. The Polar, my personal favorite, since it lets you do Bruce Lee moves and it spins you right round. And lastly, we have Muramasa, aka the coolest katana in video game history. Now, unlike the previously mentioned ones, Muramasa is a primary weapon you can equip after being the main game. And honestly, I prefer this over Raiden's default knife. Not only does it have the best raw damage in the game, but it has a longer reach in blade mode as well. Plus, it's the original Rivers of Blood from Elden Ring. Let's talk about the bosses now, shall we? Metal Gear Rising features a wide variety of opponents that you'll be encountering throughout the levels. The game will test your knowledge of mechanics such as parrying, QTs, etc. And boy howdy are those QTs a spectacle to behold. Most bosses will start out questioning Raiden's morality for how pleased he is to chop away before getting their own hearts chopped away at. The first boss of the game is the Metal Gear Ray, who sets the standard spectacularly. This fight comes jam-packed with parry timing, over-the-top QTs, and of course... And then this Rivers of Bloodbane over here shows up and beats the daylights out of you like it's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. After that, we have Blade Wolf, who's one of the more weaker fights in the game, since it's mostly a gank fight. Mistral, whose main gimmick revolves around you slashing up certain parts of her weapon. Monsoon, who has you parry individual body pieces in order to do damage to his head. Then we have Sundowner, whose fight is all about hitting the shield in specific spots, all while letting you know that he is in fact invincible. After that, we have the Brazilian Virgil himself, Jetstream Sam. And now that you're all dressed up in your mariachi getup, he's ready to throw down after Raiden stole his bike from Shadow the Hedgehog. If you manage to disarm him, he'll show you a good time with some shonen punches and spartan kicks. Finally, we have the penultimate fight with the Senator's latest mecha anime, Metal Gear Exilus. The fight involves you dodging his giant swords, which culminates in you using his own arm for a giant sword clash and a big old bump to the head. That's really tough, but, but he's so cool. But that's so dumb! I don't have time for this. 
yeah, despite facing giant mechs and whatnot, the biggest threat turned out to be the Colorado Senator himself, Stephen Armstrong, who then begins to beat the ever-living heck out of Raiden while delivering the mother of all omelets on how he's going to make America great again, while reminding you that if you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Making the mother of all omelets here, Jack. Can't spread over every egg. And then the final boss begins where Armstrong pulls a Masayo Shishido and gets two bars of HP. In this fight, you have to use free blade mode to get past the scripted segments. You also have sand weapon Muramasa to chop away at Armstrong's hulking mass of nanomachines. So just remember everything you've learned up to this point and bingo bingo, you beat the game. Now, the fun doesn't stop there, because we still have the DLC to talk about. There are two DLCs that come with the game, one with Blade Wolf and one with Jetstream Sam. Blade Wolf's DLC is more traditional Metal Gear in that you have to sneak around most encounters because he's so fragile. And once again, the stealth is half cooked, so you'll get spotted more often than not. However, the best part is that this DLC has a unique boss fight against the Desert Storm, Camson. This is where the stealth feels better integrated into the game, since you have to sneak around him to do extra damage. And then you get one of the best finishers in the whole game. Lastly, we have Jetstream Sam's DLC. Now, unlike Blade Wolf and Raiden, Sam cannot perform stealth takedowns. He can talk those with up on the D-pad though, so that's cool, I guess. Pressing A twice will do a double jump. He can do an air dash by pressing RT in the air. Holding down the Y button will perform a large multi-hit slash, which he can perform in the air as well. Honestly, Sans' play style is in some ways more fun than how Raiden plays. He has three boss fights during his DLC against Blade Wolf, Metal Gear Ray, and Senator Armstrong. And all of these fights just feel like watered-down versions of what made the original fights so good. So it's a darn shame that he isn't playable in the main game. At least you get plenty of time with him, though. Okay, so let's go over some tips and fun facts about the game, shall we? The game has multiple VR missions that are completely optional. And if you beat them all, you can unlock some unique weapons for all the characters. Most of the boss themes originally had different lyrics and instrumentations before becoming what we all know and love today. But they're still worth a listen to, so be sure to give them a shot. In Mission 5, if you head inside this building, you'll find the watermelons that were used for the game Sage Demo at Tokyo Game Show 2010. The game has several difficulty modes, and if you beat Mission 0 on very hard mode, you'll unlock the suit that Raiden has in the opening cutscene as an alternate costume. And now you can make the sun finally set on Sundowner. So hopefully this video gives you a good idea on what this game is and how it plays. If you wish to purchase this game in 2022, the game is still available on Steam and it's dirt cheap too. Another great way to play is with backwards compatibility on the Xbox One and the Xbox Series X slash S. With all versions running at a rock solid 60 FPS, Metal Gear Rising is one of the greatest hack and slashes that, as of this recording, is now seeing numbers it hasn't seen since it first released back in 2013. It's a fun, over-the-top hack and slash experience that you won't forget anytime soon. And while a sequel was teased years ago, given how Konami are nowadays, don't expect a remaster or a sequel anytime soon. With all that out of the way, this has been Jude. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you all have a blessed day. Take care.